Welcome, welcome to the Keto welcome. Summit Show, where it's all about helping you lose weight, regain energy, and live a healthier lifestyle using a keto diet. Keto diet. Here's your host, Louise. Louise. Hello everyone, I am joined today by Abby and we are going to talk about three keto recipes anyone can make in 30 minutes or less. So lots of food topics covered today. Now Abby is a busy mom of three and she has a passion for health and nutrition as well as physical and cognitive performance. And after suffering through personal issues with thyroid imbalances, she turned to a low carb diet to help her. Realizing she needed to fit this into her already packed schedule, she began creating low-carb meals that could go from pantry to table in 30 minutes or less. So welcome to the Keto Summit Show, Abby. Thanks, Louise. Thanks so much for having me. It's really good to be here. And we are talking about one of my favorite topics because I have always been busy my whole life and so I hate spending hours in the kitchen. Um, so why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and why you decided to start this blog, Appetite for Energy. Yeah, so um, I think for me, um, probably about uh, around about four years ago now, um, I just wasn't feeling, um, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't feeling really great from a health point of view. Um, I mean, energy levels weren't, weren't good. Um, I was starting to, you know, just get a bit of that weight, weight creeping on each year which I didn't, you know, like to see. And um, I definitely was feeling bloated. Um, and this is sort of feeling, I've been feeling this way for, a, it kind of was coming on over a few years. It certainly wasn't, you know, something that happened overnight. Um, and I really found I had this strange problem with, you know, my energy levels in that I, I felt like my blood sugar levels were all over the place. Like I would have this lovely, big, huge bowl of cereal for breakfast, um, very carb heavy and, I would basically two hours later, I would find myself starving and have to eat. Um, and that would kind of go on all day. So I just, my levels were very up and down and I just couldn't seem to have, just keep a stable, stable energy level. Um, and I also had had different um, thyroid issues over, over kind of quite a few years. They were sort of a bit, a bit out of balance and I, I kind of felt like that was contributing as well. But at the end of the day, I just, I felt that um, there was something going on somehow linked to my diet and what I was eating and I kind of felt that I wanted to look around at different ways of eating to see if I could um, just change just my overall health and how I was feeling and my energy um, and around about that time I sort of came across um, you know came across the ketogenic diet and I was just thought it was very very interesting because of the the different way in which you um, you know you burn fat instead of carbs and it completely changed sort of metabolic pathways so to me that was sounded really very interesting and there was I found there was a lot of um, medical research that had been done and a lot of doctors that supported this way of eating so I, I kind of thought this sounded like it could be something worth trying and I did I went off and um, you know I started doing the keto diet and I found very very quickly that I had some really amazing amazing benefits so initially I found the first thing was um, that I the, the bloating that I was experiencing just completely went away. And I would say that was within probably one week of, of just eating that way. And that, that to me just blew my mind. So I had a, quite a bloated tummy and that really just disappeared. Um, and then I would say the next thing was, you know, weight, I dropped some weight um, that sort of just seemed to fall off quickly. And finally, you know, the thing that was most interesting was this, um, you know, the issue I'd had with kind of my energy levels. I found that suddenly I, felt very, my energy was, was very stable and that probably took, you know, a few weeks to a month to really come through. But um, I would be able to suddenly go for long periods of time without eating and I, I found that absolutely stunning having, you know, just been used to always carrying, you know, little snacks around with me and that sort of thing. And I found that I could go for long periods of time and it just, it was sort of strangely, um, strangely freeing because I suddenly didn't have to be worried about food all the time. I could know I'm going out for the day and I can just, I don't have to worry about what am I going to eat? Where am I going to eat? And where do I have to take food with me? I knew that I could just be out for the day and come home sort of maybe two, three o'clock and, and I'd just eat something then. So that was a huge change for me. So I kind of was sort of converted, I think around that point. Um, and then of course what happened was I then needed to be cooking, you know, meals for the family. Um, and so, um, you know, that's when I started to realize with not most of my family, the rest of my family, my kids don't, don't eat a low carb diet. And I didn't really think I could convert them that easily. So I was sort of found myself doing a lot of spending a lot of time in the kitchen cooking and, you know, suddenly sometimes cooking two meals, you know, which is yeah. totally not something 
we really want to be doing because it just, just it takes up way too much time when you know we're all busy. So um, that's when I started to really think about what am I going to do because it wasn't sustainable. And I kind of had this sort of big moment where I decided I was going to commit myself to cooking the 30 minute meals. You know, I was going to learn how to do how to cook quickly and efficiently and not, not be always chained to, to the kitchen. So I kind of decided that's what I was going to do. And I've kind of been spending the last sort of year or so really developing and thinking about how to do that and what are the techniques and what do I need to avoid and all that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, I'm sort of thinking it's sort of not just about the clock because um, we don't want to be always chained to a clock either, but it's sort of really about the idea is about, um, you know, not having a long list of ingredients, um, keeping the recipes really simple that are perfect for those nights when you just want to be able to come in the door and know that you'll have a meal 30 minutes away, you know, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just every very achievable. And, and I'm certainly not a chef by, by, by trade or background. I'm not a fast, you know, prep, mm -hmm. prepper. I don't chop fast. So they're, they're very just much some, something that everybody can achieve. And then, then um, once I've sort of came up with a lot of ideas, for these recipes, I kind of decided that it would be really nice to to put them out there on a website and to share them because I think a lot of people, um, you know, looking just for those really simple meals that are fresh and easy and not too complicated. Um, and a lot of people that I've you know spoken to since doing this are really haven't a lot of them haven't done a lot of cooking, and they're really looking to to learn simple ways to cook you know healthy, fresh, yeah. low carb meals. Yeah, um, and I think it's one of so, the things that people don't realize is that. Um, keto meals are actually remarkably easy to put together it's mm. um you know it, it covers a couple of key ingredients and then you can create so many almost endless variations that you never get bored like a lot of people say they get bored and it confuses me a lot yeah for sure there is just there's like yeah that's right there are so many things you can do and i think it's just learning um what are the possibilities and what can you yeah. do to, to create different variety and um the more you get into it I think. Start. yeah 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 and you just it's, there's a lot to take on actually because you're thinking you've got a whole new list of foods you cannot eat things mm -hmm. you can eat um and then you've got to worry about macros and electrolytes and all sorts of keto flu things but um you know at the end of the day yes it can be very simple so what would you suggest as um, some of the first things somebody should learn about when um, they want to start cooking keto, they, they want to start preparing these fast and easy meals, but they're not a chef. They don't typically cook, you know, they might run to McDonald's for their, their dinners right now or, you know, get takeout or, you know, for lunch, they just grab something as, you know, from a cart on the street. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely have some suggestions and really sort of touching on what, what you just said earlier about it, it being quite simple is I think that's one of the things people often don't realise is that the ketogenic diet can, can be and is, you know, really quite simple. Really what you need to think about is um, basically it's a protein, some kind of protein um, that you can choose, then you want to add a low carb vegetable and, and some kind of source of fat. So that those are really easy things for people who haven't maybe cooked a lot before. It's very, you know, it's easy to, to, to pick, cook a, a steak or, you know, in terms of protein, you want to cook something that's, choose something that's going to cook quickly. Um, you know, you're probably going to choose, you can go for your ground meats. Um, so ground beef or lamb um, or minced meat as we call it here. Um, you know, you might go for chicken breast or thigh. You've got or pretty much any seafood would be pretty easy to cook and start, you know, people who are learning. Um, and then I think the other thing people who maybe are used to take out is should keep in mind is there's things you can like grab a rotisserie chicken for your protein. Um, maybe a can of tuna can always do, yeah. do a good job. And even smoked salmon is, isn't, you know, those sort of really ready to go things are really great for your protein. Um, and then you want to add in um, a low carb veggie, a vegetable. Um, and I really like my favorite would probably be cauliflower at the moment, which, you know, you can roast cauliflower in 20 to 25 minutes, toss it in some olive oil and a bit of salt and pepper. Yeah. Um, that can be cooked really, really easy. It's very simple preparation. Um, I'd also say, you know, your broccoli and your asparagus is quite a lot of, I think most of the low carb veggies cook quite quickly, actually. Yeah. They, they really, they really aren't probably the, the biggest challenge. Um, and something I'm also really into at the moment, which people who haven't cooked a lot before and want something really simple is I've been eating a lot of um, sort of these cabbage coleslaws, which you can kind of buy very easily ready-made in, in a lot of supermarkets and grocery stores where you're kind of buying a pre-packaged bag of um, 
coleslaw, which includes red cabbage, right. maybe red cabbage, green cabbage, white cabbage, and sometimes you might get a little bit of carrot in there, but you don't want to have too much of that. But um, I find that really is great. It's full of fibre, so that's fantastic. And it's quite filling, much more filling than if you're just having, you know, a salad with basically with lettuce. So um, I think that's a great choice for, a, for, your veg, for your veggie component. And then, of course, the third part, so you've got your protein, you've added your low carb veggies, veggies, and then you're going to add your fat is the, probably the most, the last component that you need for a keto meal. And you know, that's really easy. That's probably the easiest part. You know, you can just have half an avocado. You could add some butter onto your veggies or um, you could go with some olive oil. You can go with yeah. some sour cream or mayo. I mean, yeah. a, make, make up a nice sauce with a the mayo. There's so many like great things you can do. And then of course, if you want to get really crazy and add some more flavor, you can throw on some olives, <laughs> some cheese or nuts. So I think, yeah, I think there's, there's almost really a quite a simple formula really for um, putting together a meal. And I think that shouldn't be too intimidating for, for people who are really kind of wanting to start out rather than, you know, worrying too much about a whole lot of recipes, um, which yeah. are going to be completely different to what they're used to. Maybe kind of just starting with a protein plus low carb veg plus a fat source is a kind of a good place to start. And that will give you a quick, really quick meal. No, that's a great um, formula, actually. And I think a lot of people don't realize it can be literally that simple because they think mm. of dishes. They think of, you know, yeah, that's right. and yes. then you're like, oh, well, how do you make that? Yes. And I think that's where I initially got caught because when I was spending so much time cooking because I was doing exactly that. You know, you're trying to recreate all the deals, dishes that you would normally perhaps cook for your family. But I think you, you, at the end of the day, the easiest way to go about it is, is to to change some of the way you cook for the for your family yeah and so let's talk about that you said a lot of your family was not keto or low carb so what do you do now do you actually still cook two meals or have you converted them so not really <laughs> um my husband has come around in some areas um but i'm not i'm not really trying to convert my kids i think it's really up to them you know, I think that they're just, it's, it's just too, it's too difficult. And I think I'm not really prepared to go down that path at this stage. Um, but I'm introducing them to the, to the ideas of, of it and why it's good. And, and frankly, I, I really, with the kids, I just, if anything, I focus on um, keeping the sugar low. That's probably the main thing I, I'd like to do. But um, what I do is I think, um, you know, a lot of, you don't get a lot of advice on how to cook for your family um, or, or other people in your household that you live with when you're, when you're on a keto diet. You get a lot of recipes, a lot of meal plans, but I don't think a lot of people really address this as an issue, but we all have families and most of us, a lot of us live with other people. So yeah. we do have to think about it. Um, so I suppose there's two, two ways I would think about this. Um, the first way is um, number one, I have a lot of group of recipes that are really easy to adapt for people that are eating carbs in your family. So a good example of that would be um, a meatball recipe. We have a really nice read book meatball recipe on the website where, you know, once that recipe is cooking away, you've made the ball the meatballs and you've got the cook browned off I put them in the oven and while that's happening I'll just cook cook up some pasta um, for them and I'll I will have it with the, the coleslaw mix um, and some avocado maybe but I'll avoid the pasta but cook that for the kids um, another kind of easily adapted meal would be kind of a, a taco bowl kind of recipe where again you can the low carb person can eat or have it have all those ingredients meat sauce and avocado sour cream all that kind of stuff in a, in a bowl and you know the the, um, the the carb eaters can have it with a taco shell or a tortilla so it's kind of and, and again a fine another example would be a burger which is a really easy one because you can just give the carb eaters their, their bun and you can just not have the, the bun and have it with a nice lettuce wrap um, and the second thing I do so apart from having those recipes, which I know work really well, is just, I, I just have some, some shortcuts and, and ways in which I know I can get carbs, make, make the carbs a little bit more efficient. So I always keep, um, I always have ex, um, extra, when I have extra pasta or rice, I freeze, freeze it. In fact, I, I actually always cook extra so I can freeze it. And then I can easily heat that up if I want to serve some rice or pasta. Um, not that it really takes a long time to cook rice or pasta. That's probably, they're probably reasonably easy to, to cook for the family or, or others. Um, you know, you can just serve bread, serve some crusty bread, um, some garlic bread perhaps is another option for, for the carb eaters. You know, there's the taco shells, the tortillas that we mentioned. Um, and the other thing I do is just for efficiency with, you know, keeping those 
pesky carb eaters happy <laughs> is I, um, you know, cook up a, when I do, if I'm doing some roast, something like a roast potatoes, I'll actually just cook double the amount. And then I have some left over for the next day or two where I can yeah. literally just reheat them. I actually pretty much, pretty good reheated. Um, and I also do, um, you know, I cook microwave, I cook potatoes in the microwave. Um, you can cook them for 10 minutes in a the microwave, then you can throw them in the oven for 20 minutes. And within 30 minutes, you've got a really easy, um, you know, potato dish. So that's, that's kind of another easy one that I do as well. Um, so do and you I do, do sort of planning during the week to, you know, cover what will you be cooking for each set of people? Oh, uh, it's sort of, yeah. not is it on the yeah, fly? I, I don't, it's not, I do actually plan. I know what I'm going to be having. I plan out the week what I'm, that I'm going to, what meals I'm going to be cooking for sure. Um, but I kind of think I've just got into a bit of a rhythm. Like I kind of yeah. roughly know if I'm going to be cooking um, the certain meals, like a, a nice marinated lamb, you know, it's going to go well with roast vegetables. So I know I'll do that, but it must've been, it's a little bit on the fly, but I kind of have the main thing. The main protein is organized and then the other bits yeah. sort of just happen, was, happen around and I might find I've got some leftovers. I'll usually have some leftovers from the night, couple of nights before. So I can use those up as well. So, yeah. And then the other thing I will do is just, you know, everyone can have different sauces. People can have, mm. kids love the ketchups and the tomato sauce and the barbecue sauce, but I'd probably be, that's usually pretty high carb. So I would be more likely to go for a nice, a mustard or, or, you know, a bunch of other mayo or something that's going to, to suit me better. So there's, there's definitely a few little things you can do um, to get around that issue. Yeah. I mean, you've mentioned so much of a vari variety of different dishes and you know, different ways of um, kind of mixing them together to create new variations. So are there any other great tips you have for, you know, increasing variety? Because one of the, one of the complaints we hear most often is, um, oh, keto is so boring. I don't know what to eat. There's nothing to eat. And it's this like lack of um, almost creativity in their food that people miss. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it definitely is true. You can certainly get, um, you know, get bored if you eat the same meals all the time. And I think you definitely, if you're on keto or any diet really, yeah, you just, you've got to keep it interesting. Otherwise you will definitely, definitely get bored and your family will go, go kind of crazy on you. <laughs> so, um, you know, and you want to have tasty, tasty food as well. So, um, you know, you don't, when you're cooking quick meals, you're not, you don't have, your food can't simmer away for hours, developing flavours really can it. Um, so I guess, you know, I, things that I would use typically would be spices would be a really classic one. So to um, use your spices in, in your cooking, definitely. And um, I would add things like uh, chilies, you know, not for the kids, obviously, but, um, and, you know, olives and capers and, um, you know, things that are really maybe anchovies if people like them, um, pickles, things that are those really high flavour things that don't really require cooking and they can just be either popped on at the end or you can put them in the cooking. Um, and then probably I really like to use different um, types of sauces, which, which I just mentioned. And um, I either, you know, you can use like for flavour, you've got things like hot sauce, you know, you've got... Um, you know, you could use mustards, you can use often, you know, even just a squeeze of lime or lemon will give you a really good flavour. Um, and then I've got, you know, there's some of those ready-made type of sauces, but then also I'll like to make up sometimes um, like a chipotle mayo, which is quite easy to make up, but you can that's just taste is amazing and put it on kind of anything really, like a burger or your salad or any sort of meats. And, and you can make a bit of a batch of that and have it in the fridge for a few days. So I kind of often rely on, yeah, I guess the sauces and, and the different spices and things like that. You certainly don't need to be bored or um, miss out on flavour um, with quick meals or with keto meals, actually. There's just, it's just knowing a few, a few things to do that will amp up the flavour for you. Nice. And so would you then suggest people try not to get so focused on like specific dishes so much, you know, because um, like we talked about lasagna or chicken pot pie mm. or something, you yeah. know, it's something that people get fixated on and yeah, yeah, yeah. they tend to be the ones that take a long time to create. Yeah, I think maybe, I think you can have a bit of a mix actually. So like, I think it's great to know that there's a sort of simple approach to take with, with, with almost this formula like approach. I think that's what really wonderful. It gives you a lot of flexibility, but you can look at well, what have I got in the, 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 you know, the fridge tonight? You know, what veggies have I got left over to use mm -hmm. rather than always being focused on, I've got to have this recipe and these, these ingredients. Um, but like you also, I think you, you do miss out if you just only eat that way too, because you know, you can actually follow some really, you know, great recipes. I mean, most of my favorite meals are, are in fact, what I would call recipes because, you know, you're getting all that interesting sort of the nice combination of spices and things that have been tested and tried many, many times. Um, so I think really just a combination. And, you know, if, you know, listeners want to find the, 
easy recipes, definitely come and visit um, Appetite for Energy because all of the recipes on the website um, can be made in 30 minutes. We don't post anything that cannot be made in 30 minutes. That's the, mm-hmm. the whole philosophy of the website. So definitely um, looking for those quick meals. Um, check, check that out and, and just find some that you love and just cook them all the time, which is you know what we all kind of do. Well, so tell us some of your favourite meals from the website then. Um, my favourite, because you've got a lot. Favorites, yeah, I, one of my favourites is actually um, the meatball recipe, which I kind of mentioned briefly earlier. And I think it's just because I, when I cook this meatball recipe, um, I I serve it on um, this bit of bit of kind of cabbage coleslaw, which you know I get from in from the shop, or, or you, you know you can shred it up yourself. Um, and then I serve it with um, some black olives. Um, um, sliced avocado and some parmesan cheese, but and then a drizzle of the tomato sauce, and it's just, it's just I still love it. Like it just tastes amazing, and, I, and it actually tastes better um, than than having it with spaghetti, which is what kids will have it with. And so my husband actually has become converted because mm-hmm. he actually said, I don't really like the spaghetti; I prefer it this way. So that that is a complete success, um, and I love the taste of that one. That's really a really good one. So def- definitely try that one out. And um, another favourite would be uh, the grilled chicken taco recipe, which we have, which just, I mean, just has great, great flavours. You cook it on the grill, the barbecue, easily done within 30 minutes. It's got all the the yummy spices, your sour cream, avocado, cilantro, all all the things that, you know, just work really well together. And of course, that's an easy, easy to adapt one because, you know, kids can have that with their tortilla and, you know, I would have it on either actually just without just I don't you don't really need to have it with a tortilla or with it some lettuce or something you know something just simple like that um and probably and the other one which I just can't go past it is your classic you know bunless burger which um again we have a, a nice recipe for which I serve with the chipotle mayo which is a, definitely a favorite um and it's simple and you know you can cook that on the grill or on the stove um just great flavors and again easily adapted kids can have their buns um and I can avoid it and not have a bun and everyone's Everyone's pretty happy. happy. So yeah, I would say those three, though, they're the favourites. Well, thank you so much, Abby, for sharing those. Um, this has been, I'm sure, a fascinating conversation and it's super useful conversation for anyone starting. I mean, I love talking about this all day long, but yeah. um, <laughs> but it's, I mean, I've been through some of those struggles and I wish somebody had told me about this. You know, the, your strategy for separating out the meats the protein, the fat, and yeah. the veggies, the low-carb veggies. I mean, that can help people really plan and realize they don't have to write out the entire meals and print out all yeah. the recipes and go shopping every single yeah. weekend. Yeah, there's definitely some easy strategies. So, yeah, hopefully uh, people will try those out and um, have some good success. Thank you so much. No, it's been great, Louise. Thanks for having me. And we will, of course, drop all the links. You mentioned your website, but we'll also yeah. drop links to all your social media as well underneath this video so people can come and check out all your wonderful recipes. Great. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Hey, it's Louise from the Keto Summit Show, where we share practical tips and actionable advice to help you look good and feel good lifelong. So if you've enjoyed watching this video, then please click the subscribe button on YouTube and share our YouTube link with your friends and family. Thanks and see you on the next episode.